Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and there's a new version of Ledger Live out. So I'm going to walk you through how you get it downloaded and set up, and then talk about some of the new features, along with a few tips and tricks. So let's get started. All right, so there's a new version of Ledger Live out. I'm going to launch my Ledger Live and walk you through it. All right, I'm going to enter my password. As you can see, I had a password set on my Ledger Live. Uh, if you don't have a password set on your Ledger Live and you would like to, uh, you can always go over here to Settings and turn on Password Lock. Uh, they used to force you to create a password, and now they don't. The default is just to go straight into the Ledger Live desktop. But if you would like a password on your Ledger Live, you can just toggle this on and off. If yours is off and you toggle it on, it'll ask you to set up a password. And then from then on, it'll present the password when you open Ledger Live. All right, so this is what you will be presented with when there's an update available. You'll see an orange bar at the top and a download now. And you'll notice there's also a little uh, dot here next to portfolio. That's for the update. And there's also a dot here uh, next to manager indicating that there's some things that need to be done with the device itself. Uh, could be a firmware update, could just be app updates. So we're gonna check both of those. So you'll click download now and it's going to go and connect to the Ledger Live website and download the latest version. And then after it's done with that, you'll see the install now. So I'm going to click install now, right? And then you should get the installer window. And it's going to run you through the install with Ledger Live. Now, if you click that download now and it just sort of hangs, it never gets to the install, uh, this is fairly common for some people. I don't know. It could be your machine. It could be that you're pretty far behind on downloads, uh, but it does happen occasionally. There's an easy fix for that. All you have to do is quit Ledger Live. You'll want to completely quit the Ledger Live app and then go over to uh, the ledger.com website. Go over here to apps and services and choose Ledger Live and then just choose download app for whatever platform that you're using and go ahead and drop it in your downloads folder or wherever you would like to uh, put it. And then uh, once you've done that, you can go ahead and run the installer. And like I said, uh, just make sure that you've quit Ledger Live completely and run that installer with the latest version. And then the next time you open Ledger Live, you should be updated to the latest version. So occasionally that inline updater fails and all you got to do is quit Ledger Live, go over to the website, download the latest version and run the install. All right. And either way, it should take you back to this. Now, as I mentioned, I had uh, set that password toggle on so that it presents the password interface to me when I log in. You can always toggle that on and off. I like to have my uh, Ledger Live uh, password protected. All right, so here we go. We've got some uh, news that Ledger has partnered with FTX, a big exchange. So they're going to integrate uh, probably in the third party section. We'll take a look at that. Uh, they have a new RBF for Bitcoin transactions, uh, which would mean if you've got a Bitcoin transaction that's stuck, they've got an interface for getting you past that. So I'll look at that. Um, I've never had a Bitcoin transaction get stuck. Uh, usually it's Ethereum transactions, but let's see what this is and how it works. All right, so this FTX integration looks pretty cool. Keep in mind that when you do things like this, you're not really trading using Ledger Live. You're trading uh, using a third-party service. Uh, but uh, the nice thing about using a third-party service within Ledger Live is that the swaps will occur directly on your wallet. This is a good thing for beginners, so it's very easy to uh, keep your crypto in your own wallet. Normally what you do is you go over to an exchange, make a trade or a purchase, and then have to do that transfer step to get it into your own wallet. This uh, third-party integration uh, makes it kind of a no-brainer, so you don't have to really think about the transfer step. 
uh, the swap or trade ends up right on your device. So that's pretty nice. All right, so there you go. I'm running the latest version. You can go check it out. In settings here, just go over to about. Uh, it'll show you the version that you're running, right? And you can check details uh, and you look at those release notes again if you want to. All right. Now, as I mentioned, there's a little dot down here next to manager. So we'll need to double check and see what's going on over on the manager. Uh, that is where we're gonna make sure we've got our device connected. Now, if you don't have your device connected when you click manager, it's going to prompt you to do so. Uh, but I always like to just get my device connected and ready to go with a USB cable and go ahead and enter your pin. So you can see there that I have my device connected and I have my pin entered. I'm at the home screen of the device and I'll go ahead and click manager now. All right, and it's gonna ask you to allow Ledger Manager. In order to activate this command, you'll hit both buttons with your fingers at the same time. Just one little click. You don't need to hold the buttons down. Just click. And there you go. You've allowed Ledger Manager to interface with your device. All right, and there you go. I'm just gonna turn the camera off briefly to show you that my firmware is completely up to date. If your firmware is not completely up to date, it will indicate it here. There'll be a button on this side saying you need to update your firmware. I encourage you to go through that. It's best practice to keep this device completely updated whenever possible. Don't delay updates. It's really not in your best interest. So uh, always make sure you've got the device completely updated. You'll notice though that even though I'm running the latest firmware, uh, there are some updates available down here. Uh, you can click update all or you can just click uh, this little arrow and you can see the apps that need to be updated. So there's a new version of the Cardano app now. They've improved the interface on the Cardano app. So I'll show you what that's all about. But in order to do that, you'll have to make sure you're running the latest version of the Cardano app. All right, so uh, when we click update all, you'll see it updating on your screen and you'll see it processing on your device. All right, and you'll see the new app being installed. Now, of course, if you are not using the Polkadot app or the Cardano app, you won't see this update indicator. The update indicator will only occur if apps that are already on your device need to be updated. So if you don't see an update indicator on your manager, then you don't need to worry. Now that the apps are all up to date, I'm ready to uh, get going with whatever I need to do today. You can go back over to portfolio. You can see the latest value of all of the crypto accounts that you're managing in Ledger Live. All right, you can go over here to accounts. All right, so let's take a look at my Cardano accounts. As you can see, I've got a Cardano account associated with this Ledger Nano X. And then I have uh, a few other Cardano accounts down here that are associated with different ledgers. If you're not aware, you can manage multiple ledger devices within one copy of Ledger Live. It just depends on which device is connected when you set up the account. So uh, since I have this Legend Nano X connected at the moment, let's take a look at this Cardano account. All right, so I'm looking at this Cardano account that is associated with this Legend Nano X. Uh, I don't see anything different. I don't see uh, a list of my Cardano tokens, but let's head over to this blog uh, article about the uh, latest support for Cardano. Uh, on the Ledger website. I'll put a link to this blog article down in the description below. All right, this is about adding Cardano accounts to your Ledger Live, which I've covered in a previous video. I'll put a link to that up in the corner if you wanna check that one out. But if we scroll down just a little, uh, we can see here where it talks about managing native Cardano assets in with your Ledger. You'll notice that uh, they're telling you that it's okay to send your uh, Cardano uh, tokens to your Cardano accounts. And then they have a qualifier down here, uh, which mentions that you should see the tokens in your account, but if you don't, you may need to check on a different wallet. So I can show you that I, I can look at this same Cardano account in Adalite and see that 
do do. I have a lot of uh, Cardano tokens in this wallet. These are kind of airdrop tokens. They're not that uh, popular, but I do have Sunday Swap, which I would assume they're gonna they would show, and uh, ADAX, which uh, I don't see over in Ledger Live, but I can see them in my third party wallet. But I've always been able to do that. Let's take a look at the mobile version of Ledger Live. We'll go ahead and launch Ledger Live on our phone. And uh, this is the mobile version of Ledger Live. Uh, previously, uh, Cardano was not supported in the uh, mobile version. So let's go ahead and add Cardano to our mobile Ledger Live and see what happens there. I'm just gonna tap on this plus, right? And I'm going to choose with my Ledger and then I will tap on Cardano, right? It wasn't available in the mobile app. All right, I already have my device paired up. I'm just gonna tap, and it's indicating to me I need to open the Cardano app on my device in order to do this. All right, you can see the device is asking me to open the Cardano app, so I'll uh, click both buttons. All right, and I talked a little too long, so I'm just gonna tap retry there. All right, and now it's asking me to export the address, so I'll tap both buttons there. Uh, there's the path. There's the starting key path, and I'll confirm that. And there we go. Now it's syncing up with my device, and it should show me... Oh, it's asking me to export again, so let's go ahead and do that. Go ahead and click through all these until we get to confirm. It wants me to export the public key of that account. I'll click both buttons again. All of these commands are just uh, clicking both buttons at the same time. Just a click, not a, you don't hold the buttons down, you just click. All right, and there it goes. It sees that Cardano account. i uh, got uh, some more exports to do, so I'm gonna click both buttons. All right all the way through. It's having me do it again. All right, and so uh, what it has done has, it has found an existing wallet and it's indicating to me that I can also add an empty account if I want to. I'm not gonna do that, so I'm just, I won't tick it, right? I'll just leave it unticked and then I'll hit continue. And it says that I've added the, the asset I'll tap there, and now I can see the Cardano account on my mobile version of Ledger Live. All right, so let's take a look here. I can go back over to Assets. Okay, and then I can scroll down there where it says Cardano, and as you can see, it's now showing up. All right, and once you've got the account set up and you're uh, looking at it in your uh, mobile version, up at the top there is a little icon for settings in the top right corner. I can tap that. And here is where you can edit the name of the account if you want to, right? I can just take off that one, hit done there. All right, and then I'll just back out there. I still don't see any of my tokens. Like, as you noticed, I, uh, I had tokens that I could see in my third-party wallet, but I'm not seeing them in Ledger Live. So my assumption is that uh, the tokens that I possess in my Cardano wallet are not among the 100 tokens that they support, right? Because they mention here that uh, they support 100 tokens, but apparently not the ones that I have. Also, I should mention that on the device, uh, if you uh, look at the device while you're in the Cardano app, you can scroll by clicking the metal button over here uh, to this setting, and uh, they have two different modes. So you have an expert mode and uh, a normal mode. So I'm in normal mode. It says that expert mode is disabled. In order to enable it, I just click both buttons quickly, and now it's got expert mode enabled, which will give you more information on the device when you're making uh, Cardano transfers. Okay, as I mentioned earlier in the release notes, it talks about RBF for Bitcoin transactions. Uh, RBF is uh, replaced by fee, uh, which is a way of getting a stuck transaction unstuck by 
uh, replacing the transaction with another one with a higher fee uh, in case you uh, set your fee too low. All right, so uh, I looked around and found uh, in the latest version of the transaction stuck in pending uh, blog entry, uh, which is updated in uh, April of 22. Uh, you can scroll down here and uh, in Accelerate by Transaction, they've got uh, <clears throat> an entry on how it works in the Bitcoin app. So I'll, I'll put a link to this article in the description down below if you want a, a, a finer view of it. Uh, but basically, uh, it's enabled by default. Now, according to this blog article, it's not supported in uh, Ledger Live yet, um, but this blog article is a couple months old. So let's take a look and see if I can get it to work in Ledger Live. So I'll do a low risk transaction. Uh, this Bitcoin account and uh, this Bitcoin account are both uh, associated with my Ledger Nano X. So I'm just going to go ahead and send uh, some Bitcoin from one account to the other so we can test out this new feature. So here's a Bitcoin affiliate. It's a SegWit account, but uh, I'm going to be sending from a native SegWit account. Uh, but I'm going to use this address. I'll click continue here. I'll get the address of this Bitcoin wallet and I'll go back over to my uh, Bitcoin main account which is a native SegWit account. And I'll do a send and I'll paste in the address of that other Bitcoin account. We'll hit continue here. So uh, since I'm gonna be sending a very small amount, I'm going to attempt, I'm going to attempt to use a very small fee in order to get the transaction stuck, All right? So I need to switch, I'm gonna go below the 24. Right. I'll go over here to advanced. In fact, I'm going to make sure I want to make sure that this gets stuck. So I'm going to use a really low fee amount. All right. We'll see. That's really low. So I'm expecting this transaction to get stuck. And then uh, we'll see if I have the uh, replace by fee option. All right. We'll hit continue here. All right, there's a breakdown of uh, the transaction. We'll hit continue. All right, it's prompting me to open the Bitcoin app, which I'll do. Tells me Bitcoin is ready. All right, and uh, we'll go ahead and review. And approve the transaction, and then I'll approve that very small fee. And now it's broadcasting the transaction. All right, and we'll just go over here to view details and then view in Explorer. And I should see that this is unconfirmed. And then let's go back over here. Even though I used a really low fee on that transaction, it did go through. It's not quite confirmed yet, but uh, it has subtracted uh, from my total value, right? It was around 20 something and now it's down to eight. And if we go over to the other account, you can see that uh, about $10 worth of Bitcoin has come in. Uh, and it's not quite confirmed, but it has indeed transferred into my wallet. So, uh, but I didn't see that uh, replace by fee interface in my options as I was sending the Bitcoin out. But let's go ahead and take a look at that transaction on the blockchain, right? I can click on it here and choose View and Explore. And it takes me over here. And uh, on the Bitcoin blockchain, you can see uh, in the Explore that it says Replace by Fee is opted in. So that functionality must be occurring under the hood. I was kind of expecting to see it uh, as an option uh, if the transaction were to get stuck. But in my case, it did not get stuck. Uh, perhaps if I tried zero, it may have gotten stuck completely. But it is definitely functioning automatically. All right, so that's replaced by fee. Right, and then if we go over here to the Discover section, 
Uh, let's take a look at the new FTX. All right, so I don't see FTX here in the uh, third party apps. Uh, but if I go over to buy sell, uh, I don't see it listed uh, as a just a straight purchase. But uh, I did check swap. And if we go to swap and then uh, attempt to do a trade, right, they give us the option of using uh, FTX as our provider, right? And then in this case, you would need to log in. So you would need to log into your FTX account within Ledger Live. So it does require you to have an FTX account and you would most likely need to go through KYC to get everything set up. But once you have done that, you have access to your FTX account from within Ledger Live in the swap interface. Right. And basically, in order to complete a swap, you would need to uh, log in to your FTX account from within Ledger Live. And then uh, once you've done that, you will be able to make that swap. Right. As if I can swap uh, Bitcoin for Ethereum or uh, Bitcoin for Tether or uh, Dogecoin or any of the other assets that I happen to have on my wallet. All right, so uh, whatever swap I want to do, uh, whatever assets are available in uh, Ledger Live that I have on my ledger, I can do swaps back and forth uh, using FTX as long as I already uh, have an FTX account and have got myself logged in. Right, so you can log in or you can register right here from within Ledger Live. So this might work for you. Uh, if it doesn't work, you might want to just go directly to their website and get yourself logged, uh, get yourself an account set up that way. Right. And uh, once you've got your account set up, uh, you'll be able to use that from within Ledger Live to make swaps. Right. So that's pretty cool. All right, so I showed you how to get your Ledger Live updated. I showed you how to go over to Manager and make sure that your firmware and your apps were all up to date. I talked about some of the new features with Cardano and uh, Bitcoin transactions, the replace by fee feature that is uh, built in by default, and then also mentioned uh, the new FTX integration feature. So uh, pretty good update to Ledger Live. It's always being improved. If you have any questions about anything I did, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.